Hi, I'm Barbara Rimkunis, and this is your Exeter History Minute. In 1927, Exeter said goodbye to Frank Swallow, a local businessman, a salesman really, best remembered for producing picture postcards. Initially, Swallow worked in real estate. He and his partner, Herbert Dunn, purchased land in the west side of Exeter in the 1890s. That particular part of town was rapidly becoming an industrial center, and Dunn and Swallow realized that housing would be needed for the workers. They created the Exeter Park Land Company and developed Cottage, McKinley, Washington, and Hobart Streets. When Swallow married Jenny Johnson in 1891, they set up housekeeping on Washington Street. After the turn of the century, Swallow got in on the newest big thing, automobiles. He was the dealer for a quirky little car called the Orient Buckboard, made in Waltham, Massachusetts. It was small, lightweight, and cheap but also fragile, and without a roof, not terribly practical. They didn't sell well, which is why they're very collectible today. Swallow had also noticed another new big thing that arose around the turn of the century, picture postcards. Newly developed methods of printing combined with low postage rates to create the penny postcard craze beginning in the 1890s. Most of these postcards were produced in Germany, where a locally taken photograph was colorized using chromolithographic printing. <laughs> Drop that word in the break room sometime. Chromolithography added color to black and white photos. Swallow jumped into the postcard business at first having his photographs printed in Germany. Not only did this cost more, but sometimes the German publishers didn't know what colors to use. Here's a series of postcards all using a Frank Swallow photo of the Exeter Public Library with a streetcar conductor standing out front. Notice the color change. This building is now the home of the Exeter Historical Society and I'm sitting right inside that building now while you're watching the pictures go by. In case you're wondering, the building is a bit unique because it's built with yellow brick. Here's a photo from 2004 featuring super volunteer Bill Gustin standing in for the conductor. Swallow decided to solve the problem by printing the postcards right in Exeter and having them hand colored. This was done by a group of women called Swallow Girls who sat at long tables and dabbed the watercolors on with paintbrushes in an assembly line production. The results were just what Swallow was looking for, inexpensive colorized picture postcards. He traveled all around New England taking pictures, sometimes with his car, the Orient Buckboard, parked in the photo. He was a salesman after all. When he incorporated the business in 1911, he proudly proclaimed that he was the first to introduce the souvenir postcard to one half of New England. The business thrived even during World War I when most American postcard companies suffered because they couldn't get printing done in Germany. He produced postcards until his death in 1927, and swallow cards were produced into the 1930s by his wife and nephew. If you are collecting cards, look for the Frank Swallow logo. He used a few different versions. It's on the reverse of the card. They all have the swallow. This History Minute has been brought to you by Stratum Newfields Veterinary Hospital. For all your Exeter history questions, or to become a member of the Exeter Historical Society, check out our website at www.exeterhistory.org.